Hello, my name is Bill Haley, and this is part of Haley 2024, the movements, government reform ideas. This one's going to be on the transportation sector, how we're going to deal with roads. If you don't know anything about if this is the first video, you have to realize I'm very free enterprise. This reform changes the foundations of government toward much more free enterprise type of um, system. A lot more liberty, a lot more um, experimentation of governmental units. A lot of diversified representative, so we really divide how much power each each representative has by by a lot. Okay, let's go over this a little bit. I got um, about 54 slides. I'm I'm predicting about 50, 40 minutes or so. So let's go over this. We're gonna go over the complete CRA structure so you know how this fits in because all the structure is important to know. So competitive regulatory agencies, you need to know that word well. They're called CRAs. They are um, regulate, they regulate, they um, they govern, and they send representatives up to the next representative level. Um, I'm gonna go into what it what this what they do in a minute. I got another slide for that. So you have to understand the full CRA structure. Another big reforms reform is that we're gonna split all government power into 30 sectors with distinct elected representative leadership per sector, top level. The people in charge of um, roads are not the same people in charge of education. People in charge of the military is not the same people in charge of family law. Different representatives. So we, let's say the Congress gets split up into 30 sectors. I mean, 30 Congresses. Each one has a, has a set of responsibilities and authorities that nobody else has, the other ones don't have. They have just the family law, or they have just transportation, or they have just the military, or they have just the police. Now, most of this is going to be down, down, down at the state level or the local level. Five of the, five of the 30 are going to be at the federal level. Um, we're going to go over that. So you see a little bit of the structure. It's not made for you to be able to read it. It's hard to read on this one. You can go to my webpage and read it. But we're going to go over a little bit. Uh, but you see, some, you see that we have a hierarchy. And we're going to go over it like this. Here's the 30 sectors. We get rid of well, all government well, government welfare 100%. We go to a charity system. We split that into three, um, three sectors, plus family law and religion are the fourth and fifth sectors in there. It's not technically part of charities, but it's always involved in, heavily involved in taking care of the poor. You got five in the federal level, uh, foreign protection system. You got the diplomats separate from the commander in chief, separate from the military corporation, which goes significantly into the free enterprise system. Um, we got the military capability system, a funding mechanism that allows the free enterprise system to really use a roll of prices to really get the best, most productive use out of the military dollars. And then military authorization agency that gives a checks and balance. In the violent crime uh, mitigation system, we have violent crime, law enforcement, law enforcement authorization, the court system, which is the judicial authorities, then the prison and um, corrections. Now, so what are we talking about here? That that's we have a full slide on that. We have 15 others. One we're talking about right now is transportation, roads, airports, waterways, anything dealing with transportation. This one's going to concentrate on roads. Any any of the other ones are going to be similar to this. Uh, but we're going to concentrate on roads right now. It's the biggest part of transportation. Okay. <clears throat> Within each sector, so we're going to concentrate on roads right now. Um, but So we're going to call this the road sector. And then we're going to have a sector board level, which is representatives. Up here, we're going to have some authority, but not too much. Most authority is going to be down at the CRA level. You pick your CRA. They govern you. Every road company will pick their, their CRA. They govern them. We go 100% away from government ownership of roads and go 100% to free enterprise roads. Who's going to build them? Well, the people who build them now. It's silly to ask who's going to build the roads. The people who build them now. We have companies out there that build roads. Why would they build them? Who's going to pay for them? They're going to charge for their road services. People going over the roads will pay for them tolls. We have a set system of transponders that can really make this thing work well. Very efficient, productive, um, and, and the road companies set their own prices. We'll get into that. 
Um, but every road company will have to have a competitive regulatory agency. They will be held to many standards. They will be publicly traded corporations. So you can own stock in the roads that you use most. And then you have voting rights um, for the board of directors for your roads. Where you use prox corporate proxy groups, look at that video. There's a lot of ways to really uh, increase how much representation that you have, how much you have control over it. Right now, you think you have control by being able to talk to your congressman, your state delegate, your city councilman. We're going to give you a lot more. That, 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 that is not very good. Just realize your city councilman, your state delegate, your congressman, they're in charge of military. They're in charge of prisons. They're in charge of family law. They're in charge of um, insurance policy. They're in charge of financial policy. They're in charge of um, welfare. They're in charge of um, health care policy. We want people who just in, um, focus on roads, 100% focus on roads. Other people have focus on the um, other stuff. <coughs> it's so important to uh, understand that you have complete representative, I mean, you have complete focus on your representatives in this sector. So let's keep on going over. And the rating system is, rating system is going to give high quality information from a lot of different perspectives because we have a dozen um, distinct rating agencies, each with a different perspective of how to rate to give quality information to their um, members. And when I say their members, it's all public, so you give information to everybody. But membership um, means higher budgets, higher um, amount of control, higher representative um, proportional voting in the rating system. So, CRAs are made up of their members and um, RAs are made up of their members. CRAs are competitive regulatory agencies. RAs are rating agencies. Okay. No one person can serve in a position of official authority in more than one sector. We have 30 sectors. More than one level. We get the federal, state, and local. More than one branch. Executive, legislative, or judicial. Um, as well as the separation of the CRA side and the rating system side. Those are separated. Now, um, that's that's for the CRAs. We have also have another level at the representative level you can, that has that you cannot serve in more than one of those. And then we have the parent sector level. So you see how much um, representation is divided up. Nobody has so much power as to control um, education and roads. So this doesn't happen because. No person can have, an, uh, have a position of official authority in more than one sector. Then you're either on the legislative or the executive side. You're in either the rating system giving high quality information or the CRA side. Now, the CRAs only regulate. We have private businesses doing these, but they're regulating. Now, they're going to have libertarian rating, I mean, libertarian um, competitive regulatory agencies where they don't have much but they have to go above a rating floor on some things. Some things will be moved to the um, representative level. A couple things. You have to have consistent um, type of road signs. You have to have a consistent um, way of dealing with um, speeders and, and people breaking the law on the roads. By the way, we're going to complete free enterprise police. Every, every road company will have a um, police contract, a law enforcement contract to patrol their roads. And with the, within that, that allows a lot of patrol patrolmen to um, be on duty and uh, protect the um, society like we are now. That, that's a full another video, full another reform. But it's involved because the roads are going to help pay for the police. But every business is going to help pay for the police. Every homeowner is going to help, help pay, pay for the police. Oh, that's a little bit of a rabbit trail. But anyway, let's keep on going through. There's a full distinct CRA system at every level of government. The city, state, and uh, the city in every state has a distinct system. So not all the cities just have the same CRAs they get to choose. Every city has their own CRAs. Now they're going to coordinate. They're going to have big umbrella groups, yes, but legal entities they're going to um, be separated. Every city and every um, state will have um, their own. Any current government will have these complete thirty system. I mean thirty sectors. At the local level, state level, or the federal level, every current government will have this complete system. So, 
we currently have a lot of socialism in the um, current system of roads. You cannot come up with a definition of socialism that does not include what we do with roads. It's simply that the prime example of socialism. That is, that is as socialist as you can get. So, transportation is sector 28 of the 30 sectors. Um, transportation is, um, it deals with airports, rivers, lakes, roads, trains, and rails. All lakes and all rivers are going to be privately owned. Publicly traded corporations, so people can own stocks in the ones that they use most. In the rivers that um, they use, um, there's a lot to go into those. Those are different um, rabbit trails to go down, but I have pages on my website dealing with that. Okay. The free enterprise system and the role of prices will improve transportation infrastructure. Socialism never produces the quality of goods as um, free enterprise. Free enterprise always does better. So let's go. There is a natural demand for the use of services of roads by individuals. Look how people drive on roads right now. If people are driving on roads right now, there's a natural demand. You go out there, a lot of people driving. There's a demand for it. So there's a market for it. If you build it, people want to use it, they have to pay for it. So whenever there's a natural demand, the suppliers will come. People would want to serve that demand. And the whole economy is about how to serve your fellow man. That's what free enterprise, that's what the free enterprise system is. How can I serve my fellow man's demands? My fellow man's demand of services. And a lot of times you provide the service without them demanding it and then they find out that they want it. They don't have to say, I want it. Nobody wanted the iPhone until it was built and they saw what it could do. So anyway, but most people know, we already know that there's a demand for roads. Okay, whenever there's a natural demand, businesses, if not prohibited by the government, will serve that demand. So the reason private companies do not do it now is because the government took it over. It's hard to compete against government. Now there's a couple toll, toll roads out of private sector. That's fine, but it's really not the private sector within the system that I want. It, it, there's so many, it's so much not the private sector. Just because a private sector company currently owns a toll road does not mean it's the private sector. There's so many controls by government in that. So I would not consider that private, that free enterprise system at all, what we currently have with private toll roads. It, it's a step in the in the right direction, but it's not even work anywhere close to where we need to be. The parent sector board will determine the scope of the transportation sector. That's what the parent sector board does. It's for organizational purposes. They they um they determine the scope, the authorities, and the responsibilities of every sector. Okay. However, roads, canals, trains, tracks, and airspace for planes are the focus of this sector. The government-owned roads and transportation infrastructure will transition to this structure. So the current roads and other infrastructure, transportation infrastructure, will trans transition to this. Um, this write-up will concentrate on the roads, however, however, all the others are similar. The Transportation Sector Board and the Land and Water Sector Boards, including their rating systems, their rating systems, are in the in charge of intimate domain. I don't like Im, I, imminent domain, but there there are sometimes it's needed and for transportation from go to go from point A to point B, there has to be a it has to be a line that connects all the dots. But there must be a seventy percent vote. We don't make it easy. If, if you want to do it, it's, it, it has to be a very large um, need. There must be a 70% 70, 70 vote of the representatives within these sectors I, I said. There's, a, there's going to be a, um, a board that is made up of representatives from all these sectors to allow intimate domain. And another um, thing to really put a stop to intimate domain is the price to force a sale of private property must be at least double the fair market value. So no more, right now it's the fair market value. And a lot of times people don't think it's fair. We go double that, we're gonna get rid of 95% of intimate, intimate domain. Can't say that word right now, I'm sorry. 
we're going to get rid of government forcing the sale of private property to a very, very large degree, unless it's super necessary. Um, okay, the government, and by the way, it's not just for government purposes, because guess what? We're not going to have much government. We're going to have private corporations, private corporations doing the roads. Um, the difference between government and private corporations for em em eminent domain is not a very valid reason. Um, if you really think about it, it's really where it's needed. Roads that need to go from point A to point B. And somebody owns a very large um, track of land and it's not reasonable to go around that. Sometimes you have to force a sale. There's a lot to it, but if with a 70% um, vote, it's not going to be often. And also with the um, doubling of price of the fair market val value, it's not going to be often. Okay. All government taxes and spending on roads will discontinue. So we're getting rid of the complete government control we currently have, both in taxes and spending. Very important that we know taxes go away as well. No more gas tax. Now, you'll be paying for roads at the gas pump. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Mostly at the gas pump. Or you can do it other places, but um, mostly at the gas pump. The government will create thousands of private, for-profit, publicly traded companies. One for every government-owned road or sets of roads. So, in the state of Virginia, state of California, anyway, we're going to, whatever roads we have out there. A reasonable um, set of roads or one long road, we're, we'll figure out the size difference later. The, the, that system can work about how, how many roads. Do we want 50 roads in one corporation? Probably not, unless they're just residential roads that we can do that. But 50 um, major roads? No. Usually one or two major roads and maybe a couple um, side roads into one corporation. Publicly traded corporations means that you can own stocks and have voting rights for the board of directors because you own part of that road. You're, you're a part owner of that company, the road company. Okay, many the many current private roads will stay under current ownership. However, they must become a member of the transportation CRA. So there are a lot of private roads right now. They're going to stay private. That's not going to change. They're going to become a member of a transportation CRA because they're currently regulated under um, government right now to some degree. So it's, they're going to be able to pick their CRA and ha have either more or less government control depending on which they want to pick. Okay. Of these um, thousand or hundred or whatever number of publicly traded corporations with all the roads in them, you're going to have, um, all, that's going to be worth a lot. And the government's going to own 100% of the stocks. So they're going to have a huge asset. But they're going to start selling off 1% per month. 1% of the stocks per month. It's a good way of doing a dollar cost average out of that. We get the best valuation. We don't want to dump all that assets into the market all at one time. Because we don't know where we're going to come out at for the um, price. If you dump it all... You're not going to get that price that you need. You dollar cost out, out, out over eight and a half, nine years, you're going to get the better um, evaluation on that. Um, the sale of the road stocks could help pay down government debt. So yes, there's a lot of government debt out there. First, we pay off the road debt. That We pay off road bonds and all that stuff. That's first. But then there's regular government debt from Social Security and other places. You're, the normal government debt from the whole system, this is going to help pay off that. Um, so all roads, even if the roads are paid off, it has no debt on that road. Um, it's a huge asset. It's going to go into the free enterprise system. People are going to own stock in that. They had to pay for that stock. That money from that sale of that stock goes to the government and that pays off the debt. As long as the government owns the st road stocks, each, leg each legislator will have voting rights as a, for a percentage of the stocks that the government, the government owns. So, at the at the beginning, government's going to own 100% of the stocks. All the legislators will have voting rights for a percentage of the stocks. A after four years or so, you're going to have about 50% of the stocks sold off. They're going to have 50% uh, 
um, of voting rights for those 50 percent. Each legislator, let's say there's 100 House of Delegate members, 40 state senators, at least that's for Virginia. Other ones are a little bit different. So what are we going to do? Um, so everybody has that. Now, they have to go through a corporate proxy group. And individuals are going to want to go through corporate proxy groups anyway. Read up on corporate proxy groups. It's a way of turning over your proxies for your ownership of roads to a third party that you agree with. The corporate proxy groups, there's about a dozen of those that you agree with. Maybe you want a lot more environmental controls with roads. Well, they're going to help you, you turn it over to them. And they're going to um, try to get board of directors that match your philosophy of how um, the corporation wants to run. Maybe you want a lot of different things. Maybe you want beautification within your road that you own. You turn it over to the corporate proxy group and the corporate proxy group says, we're going to try to um, get board of directors and um, hire and vote for board of directors that want beautification. You can do that. So the corporate proxy groups are huge. Look at that video. Look at that page on my website. Um, anyway, the legislators are going to have to um, go through corporate proxy groups, giving a buffer against conflicts of interest. There'll be a lot of com ways to control the conflicts of interest with corporate proxy groups as well. But the main one will be the individual citizens and the rating system, making sure um, they do what they're supposed to do. The rating system is going to take care of so much corruption. So much corruption that's out there now is going to be taken care of through the rating system. Okay. The sale of stocks and, um, and the income from the sale of the road services, we repay road bonds and then ultimately repay um, government debt. Many people will see value in owning stocks in the road that they use most often. They will have voting rights for the board of directors um, and shares share in profits. So if the if the road company makes a lot of money, you share in the profits. It's like you do in any corporation. Um, and we use um, corporate proxy groups. The representatives um, at the transportation sector board level control the payment system. They don't control how much a road um, a road company charges for their services of roads, the use for their roads, but they do charge, they, they, they are in charge of the um, payment system. Now, all the CRAs send representatives up there, so you have, you have uh, power to send representatives up to that system to make sure that payment system's done right. Let's talk about that transponders um, payment system. Um, so transponders, so every car, every vehicle, has to have a transpond transponder in it. These transponders are maintained at gas stations so they can be anonymous and non-trackable. We, we don't track them. We, we'll make sure the equipment does not track them. You, we make sure that they're anonymous. We go through a lot of ways to make sure. The rating system will ensure that. The representatives will ensure that. There's a lot of ways we can ensure that. Um, the motorist must Reload transponders when getting gas. Unless they reload it by um, credit card, um, through an app or whatever. There's a lot of ways to reload it. But you, you're not allowed to buy gas unless there's a certain amount of um, money on your transponder. So, all, car, all, all cars ride over transponders are 10 cents. It might be 5 cents. It might be 8 cents. It, it, right now, that's not the big point. I came up with 10 cents as one method. So every time, then if you want to charge 80 cents for your road, you do eight transponders. You space them out 10 miles apart. It's an 80 mile road and it's 80 cents because you go over that. So if you want to go over four of the transponders because you only went over half the road, that's fine too, 40 cents. So the number of road transponders determines the road's toll rate. So it's every couple miles. Um, some inexpensive roads that are not very um, expensive to build. They might have it only every um, 15 miles. Some that are very, very expensive. Some major bridges, some especially tunnels. Going through a tunnel, you might have 30 transponders going as you go through a tunnel. Um, we have the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel going from the Outer Banks, not the Outer Banks, the Eastern Shore to um, Norfolk and Virginia Beach. So... That one might, that costs like $10, $12 to go across it right now. 
So it might have 100 different um, transponders, 10 cent a piece, 150, whatever the toll, toll is. So um, yeah, to get gas, you better fill, um, put a little bit more on your transponder going over that one. Um, and it's kind of like the Easy Pass system. Easy Pass system is just transponders. You drive over it, it deducts it off your um, Easy Pass. So it's a similar method, but it's a little bit better. I think we can do a little bit better than the Easy Pass. Um, let's keep on going. Um, and every car, now if, let's say it's not a gas, well let's say it's an electric vehicle, you still have to have the transponder. If you go over a transponder and you don't have money on your, your transponder in your car, you have to have a transponder in your car, transponder in the um, road. If you go over one uh, transponder and you don't have any in, on your card, um, any, any value on there, well the police are going to be notified. You're going to take pictures of your license plate, you're going to get extra fines, there's ways to do that, um, to monitor this and enforce it. So you have to have a um, credit card um, or a payment system to do that. So most of the time it's just going to be at gas stations. Um, and if you have an electric car, go to the gas station and load up your transponder, even without getting gas. You can do that. Okay. A Rose transponder only knows how many car transponders went over, not the identity of the tra transponder of the car. Unless it doesn't have any value on it, then it um, it takes a picture of the license plate or something. There's there's enforcement mechanisms, but there's no tracking mechanisms unless you break the law. It's, it's breaking the law not to have uh, money on your transponder as you go across the roads because you're stealing road services. You have to pay for the services that you are requesting. You're requesting to use somebody's road. You have to pay for that service. You have to, and this is a payment method. You cannot shoplift like, like that. It's kind of like shoplifting. You're using a service without paying for it if you don't have any money. So there's an enforcement mechanism. But if you have a transponder, there's no tracking mechanism whatsoever. Now, you might want a transponder with your phone um, on an app and you keep track of everywhere you went and it's private and you do your password so nobody can track where you're, you're at, but you have that tracking for yourself because you want it. Let's say you have a business or whatever and you want to control your work vehicles. You can do that, but the authorities cannot. The system, the transponder system cannot. Um, anyway, the car transponders only knows how many road transponders went, it went over, not what roads it traveled, unless you want it to. You can put an extra, um, extra thing on yours that allows you to track which roads you went on. The, the transponder system cannot. When a car, I mean, we just don't want people tracking each other. We, we, we want you to be able to track for yourself, but we don't want the system in any way, shape, or form to track you unless you're breaking the law by not having money on your transponder. Then you're just getting fined for not doing it. And you're paying double, triple, whatever. Uh, nobody wants to do that. Okay. When a car with a transponder goes over the road transponder, the system transfers the funds to the right account. It just, you go over a transponder in the road, it just knows that it went over it, you deduct 10 cents, and the um, road transponder you went over, it knows it, it gains 10 cents. The system knows it, but doesn't, it can't track anything. Competition from different roads will keep prices in check. We're not gonna have limitations on how much it costs to go on a road. If you, if you think it's cost too much, buy stock in the road, put a, a board of directors on there that's going to reduce down the cost. Now obviously, I mean, 99% of the roads, there's more than one way to get there. There's competition on how to get there. And on the ones that you use most, start owning, owning it. Have, have, have voting rights for the board of, director, board of directors. Many apps will um, help people find the most cost-effective and cost-efficient ways of getting there. So you don't want to drive 10 miles out of your way just to save 10 cent. That, that'd be stupid. However, uh, because you're wasting time and gas and everything else. But there'll be ways to say, hey, that way's going to cost you um, $3. This one's going to cost you $2. And it's only going to add um, 30 seconds to your ride. Well... That's going to keep, help keep other things in check. You might take that to save 50 cent, 
by having only 30 seconds um, extra in, um, in time. Okay, the Transportation Sector Board will have a system for building new roads. I'm not going to get into that now. That system can do it. Um, people, they're going to have a way of just saying, we want a new road from here to here. And the system, um, what, once you go through the representatives, it's not, a, it's not permission so much as, okay, you, you requested you own this land or you request to um, start buying up this land to be a road. We're going to create a whole new corporate pro, um, corporate company um, to own this road, and it might be owned. Most of the stock might be owned by another corp corporation, but we want its own corporation, or they can own it themselves for for a while. We have to see how it works. I'm not, this is the overall structure, but there have a, there'll be a structure to allow new roads to be built. It's not so much permission, because we don't want some road company to say, we don't want competition. We don't want that. So it's not necessarily permission, but the representative says, uh, yeah, th th this looks like th there's a good place for a road. You, you, made, th you made your case. We're not necessarily um, have to give you permission, but here, here, here's, the, um, here's the pathway to go. I'm not... I'm, I'm probably going. I'm going down a rabbit trail, and probably not explain that well because, quite honestly, that's not my thing. I'm creating the full overall structure. The rating, the sector board will have a structure for it without having the necessarily permission from other roads to uh, because they don't want competition. That's that, that's not where we want to be. Okay, most roads um, and sidewalks must be public places. Highly important. These are private roads. Yes. But um, there would be a, a policy, like a right of way, a, a proffer, if you will, a requirement that these are public places. Now, highways are not public places right now. You can't go out there on the interstate and walk along it. But most roads you can, especially if there's a sidewalk, you can walk along it. They're public places. These are mandated to be public places. Part of the requirement of being a road and providing road services is that it's a public place. Now we currently have restrictions um, on a little bit on roads and who can be on sidewalks. You can't loiter. You can't do a couple different things. You're going to have the same type of things. So basically the same rules about being a public place will transfer over to this new system. So even though they're private roads, they have to maintain the public um, place aspect of it. Okay, um, if most drivers and others in the vicinity of a road are stockholders, they can demand high ratings on beautification. So they, they own stock. And they vote on the stock um, on directors that, and they demand, we want beautification. Well, they're going to say, well, we need to increase our rates a little bit to use our roads. Our roads are going to go from 50 cent to 60 cent. That's fine. You're going to get a lot more beautification. That's that's a win-win. Um, some people don't want that extra cost. Some people do. Some people don't want that beautification. Some do. Who owns the stock? Who wins the board of directors? Same thing with kind of who wins the um, e election right now. Somebody, a politician voting to beautify um, this road, or the politician saying, "No, I'm not going to beautify that road. I don't want to put. We don't. We don't have the money." Who wins? Same same concept. But these are actual owners of the roads um, doing this. The rating system will require high, high ratings on cooperation with other roads. You cannot stop your competition from uh, by not letting them do an intersection. You have to allow anybody to do an intersection within reason. Um, you, can't, you can't stop a competition. Oh, you can't go through my road. No, you can't do that. Part of the requirements of being a road is that you have to allow cooperation with other roads. You have to allow intersections. You have to have, have the lights. You have to have everything we currently have. You can't just say, no, it's my private road. I can do what I want. No, you can't. There's requirements when you own a road. You can't circle somebody's neighborhood and say um, they can't get, up, get on those roads. No, you can't. 
they're public places. Public places means people allowed to walk on it, people anybody's allowed to drive on it. You cannot restrict anybody from driving on your roads. If they have a valid driver's license, we'll get into that in a minute, who, who can have a valid driver's license, who makes that decision. If you have a valid driver's license and your car's in good shape, you can drive on, uh, on that road. You can walk on the sidewalks, public places. So there's no circling somebody's, um, um, somebody's neighborhood with your road that you own and not letting anybody out. No, that's stupid. Part of the requirements of owning a road is public places and allowing everybody to use it. Okay, driver's license real quick. The representatives at the transport sec transportation sector um, deals with driver's license. Well, the requirements to do it. The identity sector um, deals with ownership, certificates, um, citizenship, and all that. They'll deal with the actual ID card. But the uh, um, sector board level of the um, transportation sector board level, the representative level, will make rules on driver's licenses. Who, who's allowed to get a driver's license? Basically, um, the current system is pretty good right now. Um, DUIs are going to be the same laws that we currently have right now. Um, and we'll get into it, so I'm going to get into something over right now. Uh, okay. We spent a lot of time on that one slide. Business owners nearby have a strong interest in good, clean, safe, and nicely landscaped roads. Business owners are going to own a lot of the roads around them. Why not? They're going to, um, it, it's an asset. It's whole, it will hold its value. They will maintain those roads. They want, clean, they want it clean. They want it safe. They don't want loitering. They'll, um, they, they, they want a good environment that people are going to come to their business. So they have a strong interest in that. So they own a lot of the stock so they can ensure it's, it's well kept. Representatives to the transportation sector board will make all traffic laws and standards on road signage. The road signage we have right now is probably pretty good. We don't know whether it's going to get better with some free enterprise, but it's but that one really doesn't go free enterprise as much because it's at the representative level. We can't have yellow stop signs in one, on some roads, green stop signs on another roads, and blue um, lights meaning go, and re, um, other roads mean red lights meaning stop. We can't. We we have to have consistency, and that's just obvious. Um, now with the free enterprise system. Some, somebody might be able to try something new, see if it works better, uh, and then everybody transfers it over if, if it does. There'll, there'll be a little bit more experimentation that w than we currently do, especially with different cities and different things, but on the most part, they have to be pretty darn consistent. We can't have triangles meaning caution in one place, stop in another place. We need consistency. That's highly important. Um, and then car safety. We, we currently need um, to have inspections on our cars. We're not going to go away from that necessarily. We don't want broken down cars on our roads, unsafe cars. We don't want cars um, with no exhaust um, controls. We don't want any cars without mufflers. We have noise ordinances um, taken care of by one of the sectors, the so land and water, I believe it is. It's going to take care of noise ordinances. So all, that, all the current rules are basically going to stay around. Because it works. It might work better. We might be able to go into a better way with the new system. But some of this stuff is going to be at the um, representative sector board level because it needs to be. Okay. Uh, we talked about the identity cards um, with the identity sector. Um, a person, person's digital identity card and all certificates and degrees and licenses, including the driver's license, will be in the identity sector. Every road business must contract with the police business um, to patrol the roads. That's a part. That's where we're going to get part of our funding for the police. There's a lot of places to get funding for the police. They go into very free enterprise direction. All all the places are going to be in private police businesses. But every road has to uh, pay money, have a law enforcement contract to patrol their roads, and um, look at that video for that. Okay, um, so I did a three-minute transportation uh, or three-minute introduction series into a lot of these issues. 
So we're going to use, use some of the same slides here. <clears throat> Let me read this real quick. The free enterprise system and the role of prices will improve the transportation infrastructure. There is a national demand for the use of these services of roads by individuals, businesses, and governments, and the military to travel from one place to another. Whenever there is a natural, natural demand, businesses, if not prohibited by government, will serve that demand. I'm sorry, I remember saying that at the beginning of this video. But this is so important. It's, it's worth it to hear again. Um, and we already talked about government creating thousands of private for-profit companies. So we can we, we automatically go into the free enterprise system very rapidly because we create. Now, who are going to be the board of directors? Let, let, let's discuss this real quick. I don't know exactly how it's going to be, but let me talk, talk to you how I think one good business model is going to go. So we have a whole bunch of road companies out there. We have a whole bunch of um, board of directors. One person is going to be able to be on the board of directors, let's say about 15, 20, maybe 30 different road companies. The board of directors are going to make a lot of the rules. They're going to be highly intelligent, highly focused. Their full job is going to be 100% focused on how do we get the best contractors for police? How do we get the best contractors for maintenance? How do we get the best um, maintenance crews out there? How do we get all this stuff? There will be an executive for each road corporation to man to do some of the work, but most of the work is going to be done through um, con through vendors and subcontractors and the like. So one board of director, one person can be a board of directors of 10, 15, 20. Not too many are going to be single um, road board of directors, single road corporation board of directors. They're going to be um, a whole bunch, whole bunch of people who belong to a whole bunch of um, road corporations. And their main job is to, I like that um, police company, they do a really good job. That maintenance company does a really good job. So the maintenance companies are gonna have to go to these board of directors and these executives trying to sell their services. These board of directors are gonna uh, be 100% laser focused on who's doing the best maintenance. What's the best um, way of doing maintenance? What's the best way of doing police What's the best way of doing all the stuff that we need to do? How we're going to um, build a new road? All of these things are going to be highly important. Okay, um, we talked about the 1% sell-off of stocks per month. We talked about some of this stuff, so I'm not going to go through it again. We talked about charging for roads. Um, transponders, I put $0.05 cents on this one. It could be $0.10. Cents. Who knows um, what, which one is going to be the best. Okay, um... Okay, my last slide. Uh, the freedom of about a dozen CRAs and a dozen full systems to experiment will yield great results. That's what free enterprise is. When we have a lot of different CRAs, competitive governing agencies. CRAs, competitive regulatory agencies, but they also govern a dozen different ones. Doing it differently. The best uh, increase business, the worst go out of business. We want a lot of companies to go out of business and a lot of people to be laid off. Yes, it's hard on them, but that's because they were controlled badly. We don't want labor hours controlled badly. We want labor hours controlled good. People who control labor hours are profitable. People who control labor hours well are profitable. People who um, lose money, they don't control labor hours well. They, they made bad decisions on maintenance companies. They made bad decisions on a lot of different um, things that they did, they lost money. We want them to stop making decisions on labor hours. Okay, a lot more is on my website. I have a whole bunch of three minute long videos that describe pretty much, pretty much what we said here. Um, but uh, please consider a donation to, um, to the Haley 2024, the movement. There's a link on my website at Haley2024.org. So, until the next video.